Hello, well, today we've got a Bedford low mass ambulance produced around about 1962 onwards. Uh, this one was sent over from Poland, believe it or not, by my younger brother who lives over there. Overall condition is actually pretty good. Um, when I take it apart, I'm not actually going to do anything to the base because it looks, well, excellent to be honest. Really good condition. The black paint's almost unscratched. There's a few little dirty bits which will easily clean off. Wheels are in excellent condition. Axles aren't at all rusty. They'll just clean up a little bit. The only thing is, really, is the back door's missing. Uh, the left hand side uh, stick has dropped a little bit on that side and someone's decided to colour in one of the windows as a pink as on the other side for some reason. With the rear door missing fortunately there is a website that I get my spare parts from and they do these white metal replacement doors reproduction. I've already had to file a little bit of flashing off the top and bottom. I'm not convinced that this is going to be short enough this might be a bit little bit too long but we'll see it should just hopefully when I take the vehicle apart just slot in I will however prime it and spray it a similar color as to the original now when it comes to coloring <coughs> I'm only use an acrylic white primer from a spray can this gives an excellent finish and also I will be using this as a as a primary color it's uh, called Volkswagen Pastel White and as you can see by the strip on the can it's an off creamy colour white as uh, more or less the same as the ambulance. Now I'm not going to get it perfect and um, this isn't going to be a die hard um, exact restoration it's going to be near as damn it. It's really going to be for my own um, collection and I'm, I'm more than happy with it just being an off white creamy colour. Some people will spend absolutely ages mixing whites and yellows together and other colours to get the exact match whereas this is a budget restoration it's not going to be perfect and uh, it's going to be just a, a standard where I'm, I'm I'm pleased it's going to look better than it is and also the West same website or was actually it might have been a different one but they do these slide on water transfers to replace the uh, ones on the side when I respray it exactly the same size same font and they'll look pretty good as well so, first things first, to uh, take off the base, I'm going to have to drill out this rivet here. Uh, I found a high-speed drill bit, roughly the same size. So I'll insert that into my drill, and what we'll do is we'll get on with um, drilling it out. And then we'll uh, take the base part uh, apart, if that makes sense. Now here we have the um, model in the vise and what you'll see me doing now is just lining up the drill. Oh, this will be a bit tight and I'm trying to do this one handed because obviously I'm recording with the other. So um, what I might have to do is just pause this and uh, drill out the hole with both hands and steady the model. So I just start off very slowly, I'm just trying to get the lip of the rivet off, a bit more pressure, move the drill around in a circular motion, see how that's doing, yeah it's not looking too bad, nearly there, just a little bit further, no. what we'll do is just give that a bit of a brush off. I think it needs just a little bit more in that corner there. And we'll just see if that comes apart. Okay, right, so with a little bit of a struggle and a bit of a skipped drill, I did manage to catch it there, but uh, I will be able to touch that up with a bit of satin black. Oh, there it goes. So that's the base off. Now the door is held in by the base. There's a little tiny slot in the corner there, as you can see. 
that supports one of these uh, little hinges that are cast onto the model. And if I compare that one to the hinge off the white metal one that needs spraying, you can probably see that these hinges are a lot bigger. I'll line that up so it probably will need a little bit of fettling but hopefully not too much I mean it might actually help the door stay in if it's a little bit longer it might actually grip into the corner but the fiddle is going to be once it's painted getting the doors back in and lined up inside of the model the seats a little bit dirty just some warm soapy water just uh, move my light because it's, it's really reflecting off that and the actual model itself it's a shame it's going to need painting really because overall the scratches aren't too bad but uh, it's, it's going to be better painted and to do that a little bit of detail on the front there I'll just probably use a little bit of chrome silver paint do the headlights and the grill so that's the uh, dismantling of the vehicle what I'll do now is I'll probably the best way to, to strip this one is I might use the old uh, paint stripper or caustic soda I haven't quite decided yet um, caustic soda is a lot easier actually it's a lot less messier so I think I'll do that and over here is my special jar which I use I say these budget restaurants you don't need anything fancy I just use a sandwich bread jar and caustic soda wise all I've got is this stuff here it cleans patios and drains and stuff comes in a granular form I'm hoping I've got enough left actually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this into that jar with some very hot water so it dissolves and it should take the paint off this in no time at all now just to warn you if you're using anything like this i'm going to do it outside in a well ventilated area because it will give off toxic fumes if you're doing it inside wear a filter mask some sort of carbon filter mask or respirator because you get this stuff in your lungs you've had it it really will cause you serious problems i've worked in hospitals for many many years and i don't advise you using anything like this in unless you're in a well ventilated area so i'm going to get on and do this and i'll catch you in a minute Okay, so it's the models in there. It's in the caustic soda. Give it a bit of a stir, and I'm going to leave it in there for about five minutes. It's in boiling water, and hopefully, we'll see the results of the paint stripper in a few moments. Let's agitate it. It's all it's all dissolved. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have a lot left, so I'm hoping that this is just enough until I get some more. Pretty strong stuff, you don't really need a lot. As you can see, it's already stripping off the paint on my forceps. Okay, there we go, look at that. Now, oh, how brilliant is that? It's come off already. The door is in there as well. Let's give it another good. It's around and that has done the job I think. Only takes a few seconds. I say I find caustic soda a lot quicker than paint stripper. So look at that, completely gone. And I've done it outside as well. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, take the model inside, empty this down the drain and then clean the model up. Right, so you can clearly see now that that caustic soda did an absolute fabulous job on this casting. Uh, the casting itself is really good. There doesn't seem to be much evidence of oxidization. No deep scratches or dents of any kind. So I am really, really chuffed. That has come up almost perfectly. Now you will see now the clear, the clear difference between 
the original and the replacement doors. A bit of contrast onto the green mat there. Not a lot of difference in the casting manufacturing, I imagine. But the metal itself is almost identical. Obviously, this is a lot older. It's about 50 years older. Or more than 50 years older. I think they believe they made these ambulances from 1962 to the year of my birth, 68 or thereabouts. So, yep, they look like they're going to fit perfectly. Especially when I've filed down that little corner hinge there. Now you'll notice that I'm wearing vinyl gloves. Now, uh, as I mentioned with the respirator, protection is paramount when using chemicals. I find these vinyl gloves as a splash protection are very good against um, the caustic soda. As I don't get my fingers directly involved, I used these forceps. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to use a wire brush on a Dremel type drill to polish this up. So I'm going to set that up and then we'll uh, go through the process of getting this even cleaner and as a precursor to priming it. So I'll catch you in just a second whilst I'll set up. Okay, right, so we'll just go over to my uh, little area over here which happens to be a workstation and a chest freezer. The wife got a bit annoyed about me using it as a spray booth as well. My spray booth being a cardboard box with a CD on a, 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 a bit of wood turntable. Again, budget restorations, you don't need anything fancy. As long as it turns around, that's my little spray booth that sits on top of the uh, chest freezer. And well, yeah, there's been a bit of overspray, so I get into trouble quite often about that. But as I say, it just adds a bit of color to the freezer. So this is a very cheap, again, you don't need a top of the range of Dremel, about hundred pounds. Hobbycraft tool, 24 pounds, I think it was. This polishing and grinding set, again, from a little as I think it was. Um, again, that wasn't very expensive. £14, I think I paid for that. All sorts in there. Little section under there as well, with all sorts of polishing and grinding wheels. Absolute bargain, and it's ideal for the hobby craft, or hobbyer, who's um, doing this under a budget. Now, this is a little wire brush I'll be using. It's getting a little bit cream cracker at the moment. Bits uh, fly off. So I will warn you, when you're using tools like this, again, safety is paramount. So use safety goggles because uh, again I will mention that I have worked in hospitals for many years and I used to work in an eye clinic and believe you me I've seen little metal brushes or similar go into people's eyes and they've lost their eyesight. Very abrasive, very sharp and when it goes into your cornea very very painful believe you me. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll need both hands, polish this up. And you'll see it a lot, a lot cleaner than it is now. You might think it looks pretty clean now, but with this brush, it just uh, brings the surface up um, a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. And that way, when I prime it, it won't look, uh, well, it will look even better than it is now. So I like to clean it up, get all the debris off, any bits of loose paint, which I don't think there are any. And uh, we'll show you how it comes up. Okay, right, so even brighter I mean that came up like new really really good happy with that big time one of the doors as well again just remove any debris any flakes of paint and even one of the newer one I know they're both really shiny the light overhead they're almost identical so what I'm going to do now is before I start painting anything if I can find the base is I'm going to put the models together and actually see if this back door here needs much to filing uh, and hopefully it won't take too much effort so um, I say it's going to take both hands so we're going to try and fit these doors in here and see how they work as you can see with a bit of jiggery pokery 
and a small bit of filing, the doors fit. Now there's no insert in the middle, so they do actually push in. Is it supposed to, which is soaking in warm soapy water? I've got the uh, inside of the ambulance, the plastic insert. So once I've brushed that up and it's inside again, the doors actually won't fold in on themselves. So I'm more than pleased with that. I am somewhat chuffed that that's gone together really well. So the next thing to do is to prime it. What I will actually do is just with some thinners, in case I've left any grease from my hands or bits of dust from the workbench here, any little bits of alloy that I've filed off, getting stuck to the surface and contaminating the primer. I'm just going to go over it with some thinners, give it a good clean, and then uh, prime it. But no, that's brilliant. Absolutely perfect. Doors were a little bit fiddly to go in, but I think I've worked out a technique to keep them in. Again from the Hobbycraft Centre, these needle files, absolutely perfect for the job. Small, light, thin, and they're abrasive enough to tackle this alloy. This alloy is surprisingly soft, so you don't really need a lot of pressure to take off any of these uh, little bits of casting swarf. Yep. So what I'm going to do now is uh, spend a couple of minutes, don't actually have a lot left, but it will be more than enough for this job. Give this a good shake and then we'll uh, prime the model. Now a lot of people use air guns, air brushes. I can get away with these cans, I've been doing it for quite a long time. As long as you keep it about nine inches away, keep your finger, press lightly, spray, spray, spray in that sort of motion, keep it light and covered. Don't keep it in one place for too long because it will just pull, it'll run into all the detail and then you'll ruin it. So just keep nice sweeping motions, psh, 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 like this, get a nice even coat. And I find spray cans are just as good as an airbrush for these sort of jobs. Obviously if you're doing very detailed um, detailing, some people like to contrast the panels with a bit of uh, shading, make things a bit darker, some people like to weather them up a bit then yeah you, you need an airbrush but for a basic budget restoration again give it about 10 minutes between coats especially the primer and the uh, primary base coat and it should go on really well so i'm just going to get on and clean this and at the next stage what you should probably see is this uh, sprayed in the base color along with the doors Primers on, so I just used these forceps to grip the underside of the model. I didn't use my spray booth for this. I found been able to turn it around with these forceps and using my what I call spray glove. Again, vinyl protection. Don't paint on your hands. Just holding the forceps, turning it around as I was giving it a nice even coat outside. A bit too glary because again the light's right on it. I'm from a different angle. happy really happy it's gone on really well so that is just the one coat of primer more than enough because I don't want to obscure any of the details with the doors I did use my makeshift spray booth with my CD turntable so that's one side of the doors sprayed I'm going to give it 10 minutes to harden and then I'm going to turn them over and do the other side uh, before I put the main coat on, I'm going to give this several hours to um, dry. And in the meantime, what I shall probably do is just get on with cleaning up the rest of the model. This has been in warm soapy water, so this will get a quick brush. I've got an old toothbrush here. That I believe colour coded. I always use the purple one for anything that's got chemicals in it. Paint stripper, all the caustic soda. And as you can see, after a while the brushes get a bit worn down. I use this one, the red one, for 
in plain soapy water just to clean anything up. Try and I try not to mix the two up in case you know, obviously you don't want chemicals in with a, a piece of plastic. So a bit of a tidy up, a bit of a clean. I'll then proceed to just tart up the base a little bit, give it a clean. Unfortunately, where the drill skipped, a little bit of a nick there, but some uh, satin black. You won't know any difference. And then I'll uh, probably wait until later on this afternoon to spray the model. So what I'm going to do is just uh, finish this video here. I'll post it. And then the, the second part of the video I'll either do later tonight or maybe in a couple of days time, seeing what sort of time I have left. So that's it for the moment. And uh, thanks for watching this part. I hope we do come back to see how it turns out. I'm quite excited to see how the transfers go on. There is a bit of a technique to put these things on. So I'm hoping that they go on correctly. You never know, I've bought some water side transfers in the past that have just disintegrated upon application. But I'm hoping that's not going to happen with these and that they're of a decent quality. But we'll see. Anyway, so uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.